Generally, when it comes to perks with Hag, I like to pick one of two playstyles. Either playstyle will involve you having certain perks. For the everyone injured kind of playstyle, you're going to be putting in something like Sloppy Butcher as your primary focus. You can also add in Fanatophobia. And then other perks, you just make it more uncomfortable for them to, to want to heal up rather than doing generators. Doing that will make your downing ability a lot easier for you. The other playstyle, which is to be sneaky, stick on Dark Devotion, monitor abuse, anything that will give you the jump potentially on people. Dark Devotion is very, very useful because once you hit the obsession, they get your terror radius as they run away. If someone then sets off your trap across the map and you teleport to that, they might not realise, or people around them anyway, will not realise that you're nearby. That can give you a few hits that you wouldn't have otherwise have got, maybe even a generator grab. It does become very fun when you start getting a grasp of Dark Devotion. And monetary abuse has a similar sort of purpose. You won't be able to get gen grabs, but you will be able to get the jump on people a lot better because the haggers are low terror radius already. Monitor and abuse will reduce that further. I suggest linking those sort of perks up with whatever really you fancy. I recommend save the best for last as a, uh, a pretty big one on the hag. You can also use different perks where you can use Nemesis and play with your food, which will really help out your chase game. But other than that, though, I tend to try and stick to those two mainstay perk builds if you can and adding a few perks you might want. I generally try to put barbecue and chili in simply for the blood points. The aura reading will not really help you that much. But yeah, there's not really much you can do with Hag. You can put Make a Choice in there, you can put in Devour Hope in there, you can put in Hex Ruin in there if you haven't got Corrupt Intervention, but I highly recommend Corrupt Intervention over Ruin. Try and work out what kind of playstyle you want as the Hag, a primary playstyle, and build up your four perks around that playstyle if possible. So what perks should you look to unlock? It's a very subjective thing to talk about is perks on a certain killer. Any killer you decide that you like, you'll have your own playstyle and your own preferred perks for that killer. And you can argue for days with any number of fellow killer mains, just fellow players in general, about what perks are best for that killer. Hag is no different. What perks do I like on it? Well, you immediately, Sloppy Butcher is one you can get immediately, which is open to anybody. Other perks I like on her are actually ones that you need to unlock through other killers. First one I like to unlock is Save the Best for Last, which is from Michael Myers. Save the Best for Last is whenever you hit a survivor that isn't the obsession, you will gain stacks, and each stack will increase your cooldown for hitting a survivor. So when you smack somebody and you have that delay, you know, you wipe the blood off your claws, and that'll be reduced as you get stacks built up. Hitting the obsession will actually lower the stacks you have, which will make it slower again. So hitting your knowledge sessions is actually a really good thing and avoiding your obsession is really good as well. The next one I like to get is Corrupt Intervention, which is off the plague, very, very powerful. It blocks three generators at the start of a game, which forces survivors towards you, or it gives you the chance to place traps down in an area without being distracted. It can be very nice in either way you look at it. Next one I like to get, barbecue and chili, which could also be the first one I like to get. Unlocking that for Leatherface gives you extra blood points, which then can be recycled into your blood web to get other perks a lot faster. Barbecue and chili is not a perk that's gonna help you gameplay-wise too much, because all reading across the map is not really beneficial to you. But the blood points are very nice, and I like the perk just for that alone. The next one you can get, these are in no order by the way, but is Phanatophobia, which is off Nurse. Every person that is injured will reduce action speed to the survivors. That combined with Sloppy Butcher can make it very, very difficult for survivors to heal up in time to get pressure back on the generators. They'll have to make a decision usually between healing up or doing generators. That works very well for you when all you need to do is keep putting that pressure on. If you can keep them injured, it makes some insta downs when you do teleport to them. Next one I will say is Dark Devotion, which is another plague perk. Dark Devotion is when you hit the obsession, they get your terror aid. It's a set amount of time. So hitting the obsession and they will run off and they will take a terror aid away with them. If a trap gets set off away from them and you teleport to there, survivors in that area won't actually know you're around. You can use that to grab people off generators, you can do it just to get surprise hits on people and if you're combining that with like Sloppy Butcher or whatever, potentially they could well be injured already and you can get it down. Very strong in the, uh, in the right circumstances. Next one we'll talk about is Franklin's Demise which is off Leatherface this goes in with a innate weakness for the hag, which is flashlights. Franklin's demise 
can be very, very useful in knocking those flashlights a bit out of people's hands, giving them something else to worry about, which is to pick that flashlight back up later on. You can add a lot of a lot of pressure onto a survivor by making them drop their items. I don't recommend using Franklin's unless you see two or more flashlights in a lobby, but just being able to throw that on and just counteracts part of your weakness is very nice indeed, but there are better perks. Other perk you might want to use is make your choice, which is a pig perk. Make a choice means that when you go out, I think it's 32 meter range of a hooked survivor and they get unhooked. When you go back to the person who has unhooked them, so the person who's got them off the hook, if you hit them, they are instantly downed. It can allow you to put a lot of pressure back on, get another hook very quickly and keep on other perks you might want to put on. Develop hope and ruin both available to, available to you from the start, so feel free to use those. You've gone into a game as the hag and immediately you want to try and work out where you want to be placing your traps, where you want to be setting up your territory. What I generally like to do is try and look across a map and see if those generators are more bunched together than the generators on the side you've spawned. Now, if the generators across from you are, I've got a better grouping together, you know, they're a lot closer, start heading that direction and start putting traps down in high traffic areas as you go across. That means areas which people will run through quite a lot pallet areas and potentially window vaults as well. I don't recommend doing too many window vaults just for the simple fact that generally it's a bit hit and miss whether people use them or not. Unless it's a very very strong window loop then try and avoid them a bit and just keep on heading towards those pallets traps down as much as you can. Once you're over there, just keep using your traps. You've got 10 available to use at any one time. You can keep using them though. Don't think once you put 10 down, you can't place any more because you can. What will happen is when you use your 11th trap, your first one you put down at the start of the game will disappear and you'll then have only 10 traps down. As you keep on going, the first trap, the longest lasting trap so far, that one will be removed in place of the brand new trap you placed down. So keep putting them down where you need to. Don't worry about that limit too much just keep a nice net going in your pacific area so once you've got your territory decided in your head try and get a net of traps around that area make sure that survivors who will initiate into a chase by you will inevitably run into danger even if they think they're running into safety try and get that concept going and you'll be doing really really well and mainly once you've got your territory marked out you don't want to move away too far from there once a chase does occur and they start running away from your danger area your territory consider pulling away from that moving away from that chase and re-engaging with your net of traps in your area and wait for your moment to get it down don't let them dictate to you where you're going to be chasing what you're going to be doing you are the hag and you are the person that has to dictate the game throughout don't let them do not let them pull you away from your area and let's set that in action we've got a few games here we'll put them we'll put them back to back and show you how i start the game as the hag and just watch how i am um, starting to place my traps get a territory going and moving towards an area or building up an area that will become mine, that become my danger area. And it can be wide or it can be small. It just depends on the map you're on, what you need to do. Smaller maps encourage a smaller net of traps. That's absolutely fine. Larger maps require a broader load of traps. And the bigger maps can be difficult for the hag, but you have to keep that net going. Otherwise you will lose the game just for the fact that you have little pressure going on. And also, you will probably lose gens early on in the game. That is absolutely fine. The more gens that get popped while you're playing as Hag is generally better for you because it gives less generators that the, the survivors can work on, which makes your job easier. As Hag, it can be a bit difficult, especially early on, to work out when to chase, when not to chase. Times when to chase really are moments where you can see the survivor is going to be forced to run into areas where you've got further traps. If a survivor runs into your territory, chase them into it, or try and maneuver them into it, herd them into that area, and try and down them with your traps. Teleport is your best friend as Hag. Don't get chased in an orthodox fashion across the map. Don't leave your territory and just start thinking that you can loop them around an area. 
take a pallet stun, whatever, and down them that way. That's not how this killer works. You need to get your traps down. You need to use those traps to down people. Do not, do not get into a chase. And to further my point, when to chase, it's a very similar situation. Chase when you know they're gonna be downed easy by your traps that are coming up. If you can see your traps are forward, chase them into it, absolutely fine. Chase when it's getting towards the end of a game and you need a down. Sometimes as Hag, you will have games where the other team have just pressured you perfectly. They've got the generators done. They've left you with no other, other plan other than trying to down people in an orthodox fashion. That's fine. If you have to do it and try and get a down, you can get pressure from that down if you can get them down. Other times a down is obviously at the end of the game when there's only one person left or two people left and there's loads of generators still to go. At that point, you've kind of won the game already. Why not just go and chase them down, get them down in the most simplest fashion possible? That's also fine. Looping as a, as a hag is not going to work out well for you. A loop for a hag should involve a trap placement immediately. Where to place a trap? It's a good question. Generally, you want to make sure that you are moving the survivor into the right direction. That, generally speaking, is to put a trap down on the side of a pallet, which is the worst side for the survivor to go towards. The direction that's worse for the survivor is generally the side which is not facing a, another looping area another window tile or some other area such as like a um, killer shack that a survivor could use to continue a chase very very easily place that teleport down the trap down sorry and then begin looping the survivor around if possible or if they keep running off then just chase them down and try and get into another trap if that is a good idea go back to the point i made about when to chase if they disengage from the loop and they start going towards an area that is not advantageous to you just drop that chase if it's the best decision to make in that time in your game but if they are going to loop place a trap down loop them around once they go over the once they go through the pallet area they will likely drop the pallet your trap will set off now you can make two choices you can teleport immediately and try and hit them that way or do what i like to do which is called a fake teleport and it is to stop dead and just look at them the survivor will likely think that you are teleporting onto that trap that has just spawned out the ground they will likely panic i say likely it might not happen but they will likely panic and vault that pallet right towards you all you need to do is go forward and smack them and you've got an immediate hit on them which will either put them in an injured state or the dying state You've down people and they're deciding where to place your traps to defend that hook essentially. Now, the hag comes in for a lot of abuse post game quite often for, in inverted commas, camping. You can camp as the hag and it's very easy to do without really realizing, but often it's the survivors you play against who make the mistake to force you to teleport to a hook. Now, most people, including myself, quite often will place a trap directly underneath the person who's hooked, which is perfectly fine. On my previous video, I said I recommend not doing it too often, but I didn't mean it quite literally, don't do it. Place a trap down underneath them that will force the survivors to make a decision, either run into that hook and do a fast unhook and allow you to teleport directly back immediately or delay their time and their resources a lot by crouching towards the hook and down them safely. What I like to do though is place a trap down right underneath the hook, move away, figure out the high traffic locations or the the areas that are most likely to bring those survivors in to save that person. So say if you look across the map after hooking and you know they're on certain generators, if you place your traps to, if you put a few traps as you go towards them in areas that you know they will run through to get that safe you can all you can easily get some teleports going back to that hook and down people really really easily just this just usually for the sake that they don't expect it they do not expect you to have trapped before that hook they expect you to have only trapped right underneath so you can catch a lot of people off guard doing that and it can actually be a lot more dangerous for the enemy team if you do that. I highly recommend you play as strategic as you possibly can, think about your trap placements and work towards an ever-evolving game plan, but always keep in mind your territory, getting back there, making that area dangerous for the survivor team as you possibly can. Post-game, you will get abuse as hag, you'll get called camper, 
a hell of a lot and it's not your fault just remember if you play in a certain way of a game plan you you generally are going to be teleporting back a lot back and forward a lot you'll be unknowingly tunneling or the only people that you can go for or people have just been on the hook as the hag you haven't got the high mobility high mobility sorry to be able to completely change targets all the time the hag is very slow and she's very dependent on teleport so if the enemy team is stupid enough to keep on making these traps go up it's their fault it's not your fault never feel bad about playing in a certain way as the hag because at the end of the day the survivors can avoid it if they play in the right way and let's summarize what the hag is all about number one you have a smaller tear radius than other killers which you can use to catch people off guard two you are slower than other killers which make it very hard for you to chase people in the orthodox fashion three you have traps that you can use to pressure and get kills four you are very strong on smaller maps and you get progressively weaker as the map size increases, which is the case for most killers, or not, if not all killers. And five, you are able to avoid certain game mechanics, such as looping, vaulting areas, and you can completely shut down certain tiles as, as hag. I hope this guide has helped you figure out the hag a bit better, work out how to play her, what tactics to use, what strategies you might want to incorporate into your game. Overall, make you a better hag player. Do be aware that you can adjust with the hag very comfortably during game. You can go from plan A to plan B, back to plan A where you need to. Make sure you're adjusting and adapting to your opponents. That's sometimes what you need to do. If you start losing in one certain aspect of the game, adjust and do something a little bit different. Play to your strengths, avoid the survivor's strengths where you can. Hag is very fun once you get a grasp of her and she can also feel a little bit underwhelming when certain teams of survivors come against you but do not let that get you too much. Keep a level head, always try and dictate the game, never let the opponents dictate to you what you need to do. If a situation arises where you come against a good survivor team and they start dictating the game, try and take a step back, don't get roiled up, rethink your positioning on the map, on the game, what you're doing, try and bring the game back into your area, into your strength, into your area of comfortability and never let them dictate to you what you should be doing. If you take a loss, you've likely, it's likely you've taken a loss to a very, very good team and that is nothing at all to be ashamed about. Any killer that loses to a good survivor team, it's no, it's no harm done. It's one of those things, dust yourself off, get back into the fog in the next game and I'm sure you'll be destroying people once more. Thanks for checking out the video guys. I hope that's been as in depth as you needed. I love playing Hag. I hope you love playing Hag and best of luck guys. Thanks again. Take care and I'll see you in the next one. See you later.